We're celebrating today, and with the maximum solemnity, St. Maximilian Mary Colby, who's a most special patron and protector of our family of the Franciscans of the Immaculate. He was born in 1894 at the age of 13. Very young age, he already entered the Franciscans, ordained a priest in 1918, and died a glorious death in 1941, the death of a martyr, perfectly conformed to Christ, his master, in the concentration camp of Auschwitz in 1941. St. Maximilian Mary Kolbe achieved many things in his life, many great things, just a few of them. In 1917, before he was even ordained a priest, he founded the Militia of the Immaculate, whose aim was to spread devotion to Our Lady, whose aim was to bring the Immaculate to all souls and through her to bring to those souls Jesus, their Savior. He did this in 1917 when he was still a cleric. Today, this militia of the Immaculate has more than, or rather, close to four million members worldwide. In 1927, he founded a Marian friary called Niepokolanów in honor of the Immaculate in Poland. By 1939, it counted around 600 professed friars and around 200 other young men in formation, making it the biggest monastery in the world. At that same friary, they printed the Ritzesh Nipokolani, or the Night of the Immaculate, a monthly journal of devotion to Our Lady. In 1938, it was printing a million copies. He founded a mission in Japan in 1930. Within a month of his arrival, though he didn't know the language, he was already publishing that same periodical in Japanese, and within five years, had become the biggest Catholic periodical in Japan. And could go on because he achieved many great things, but he didn't value these things any more than what they were. And they were just means, not ends. He put no more value in these things than what they actually had. Ways to an end, to a goal, and nothing more. And what was St. Maximilian's goal? The goal and the point the whole purpose of his existence. Well, he wrote this in one of his letters, a beautiful letter that he wrote to one of his converts from Japan. He wrote in 1935, one effort alone in Yepokolanum is essential that is becoming every day more and more property of the Immaculate. When this happens, then everything else will come to us with her. Hence the church applies to her the words of Holy Scripture. Now all good things came to me together with her from the Book of Wisdom. Oh, how I could desire to make this truth take root deep in the heart of everyone who breathes the air of Nepokalanuf. On it depends all future growth, strength, and development. One effort alone is essential. That is becoming more and more property of the Immaculate. When this happens, everything else, all other goods will come to us with her. Everything else is a means. If you go to the friar of Nipokalanov in Poland, you still see the huge designs of how the friary functioned. It could take up almost a whole wall of just the organization of the friary, the 600 souls, 800 souls that worked day and night for the Immaculate. It was a well-organized, a well-running machine. But all these things, all these sectors and, and uh, departments in the friary, all these things were merely means to one end, to one essential end, that is becoming more and more property of the Immaculate because all good things come to us together with her. Now, is this just a devout way of saying that we really love Our Lady, all good things come to us together with her, but it's not really true. We'd like it to be true, and just to say a lot about Our Lady, we say that all good things come to us with her. Or is there truth behind this affirmation? There is truth behind it. What is it? In his letter to the Romans, St. Paul says, He who did not spare his own son but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? We know that with Jesus we receive all good. He's the author of all good. He's God himself. But where do we receive Jesus? St. Paul says, when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born of Mary. Jesus comes to us through Mary. And in Jesus we receive all good, but we receive Jesus through Mary. So it is true. We have Our Lady, we have all good. Through her, we receive Jesus, who is all good. 
So we do have to use all the best, latest, greatest, most effective means because the salvation and sanctification of souls depends on it. Sanctification and salvation of our own souls depends on it. To use all legitimate means, that means are means. We have to value them no more than what they are, ways to an end. And one effort alone is essential. That is becoming more and more property of the Immaculate. If you want to live the spirituality of St. Maximilian, learn the lesson of his life. It is that one effort alone in life is essential, becoming more and more property of the Immaculate. Because if we possess her, we can apply to her the words of the Church. If we possess her, all other good things will come to us together with her. St. Maximilian Mary Colby, pray for us.